is rather high or rhetoric as it used to be called is said to have come from the Anglo-Saxon word meaning the harbour where cattle are landed. When cattle were brought up the Thames by boat, maybe they landed them on Rotherhithe to feed on the plush marshy grass before taking them to market in London. The spire of St Mary's Church stands out from the surrounding buildings. Rotherhithe Street follows a bank round a bend in the river. The famous inland waterways of Surrey commercial docks are no more. All that is left are these signs showing where it used to be. In Tobin's, the lead works was here for many years, but all that now remains is this empty piece of land. Many jobs were lost along with its closure. Before 1970, wherever you looked inland, you would have seen ships. 136 acres were actually underwater. Now most of this has been filled in. Rotherhithe Street is really a wall against the Thames and the continuation of Rotherhithe Street is still called Fermanby Wall. entrance to Greenland Dock is Surrey Docks Farm. Greenland Dock used to be called Howland Dock and was renamed when it was used by the ships that hunted whales off the coast of Greenland and later on instead of whales ships landed timber. This is the other end of Greenland Dock from the bridge in Redriff Road. Rotherhithe was quite a large village. If you carry on down Dock Alley to Plough Way, you can still see the old boundary marks showing where the parish of St Mary's Rotherhithe, which was then in Surrey, joined the parish of St Paul's Deptford, which was then in Kent. Rotherhithe at one time was almost an island. Ships and sailors had always played an important role in the lives of the people. The heart of the old village was the parish church St Mary's and it's been associated with the village for over 500 years. The original church was built in 1310 but the church you can see today was built in 1715. <laughs> The four pillars supporting the roof are not made of stone as in most churches, but tree trunks like masts of old sailing ships encased in a thin plaster shell. This beautiful organ was made by John Byfield in 1764. The walls of the church are covered with memorials of the people who lived in this riverside village.
This plaque is in memory of Captain Christopher Jones of the Mayflower. The carving is not of the Mayflower. The was here at about the same time. The chair was made from some of the oak timbers taken from the Temeraire, a 98-gun ship that took part in the Battle of Trafalgar. The rich people lived in beautiful houses like Nelson Dock House. Twenty eight Paradise Street is another example. Dr. William Gates School and his son, also a doctor, lived in this fine Georgian house. It was later used as a police station. For the poor, there was only the workhouse in Lower Road, which was later converted to St. Olive's Hospital. This is now facing closure through government cuts. Opposite St Mary's is a school founded by Peter Hills in 1613. On the outside are two figures of a boy and girl in school uniform of 200 years ago. The building next to the school is the old watch house. In the days before the Metropolitan Police they kept order in the village. The building to the right was the engine house for the village fire engine. There used to be another one at the other end of Rotherhide Street. Fires were quite commonplace due to a large amount of timber yards and wooden houses. The children's playground next to St Mary's Church was once a burial ground. It holds the tomb of Prince Libu, who died nearly 200 years ago. The story is told briefly on a memorial plaque inside the church. Redriff Road is an old doctor's call-on shelter where men waited for work. The foreman of the dock companies would call on men wanted for that shift. He would pick who he wanted and the families of those not picked starved. In 1889 the workers took part in the famous strike for the Dockers Tanner, which won them sixpence for an hour's work. Later Dockers were put on a regular weekly wage, but by then the Surrey Docks and many other docks were already closing down. This is one of the few riverside workings left. Many other areas have fallen into disrepair. The area is full of potential, but until this is recognised by the politicians, once famous boat repair yards and other riverside workings will continue to waste away.